When Prince Charles and Princess Diana married, their story was seen as a fairy tale, a handsome prince sweeping a wide-eyed young woman off of her feet. But the couple got divorced in 1996 after a tumultuous and rocky marriage. Here's how Charles' life changed after his separation from Diana. We all know that the royal family's lifestyle is largely paid for by British taxpayers, but Prince Charles's financial life was significantly altered after his divorce from Princess Diana was finalized. As reported by the New York Times at the time of the divorce announcement, Charles, quote, formally declared that he would not be subsidizing his ex-wife's living expenses anymore. It would be up to her to pay her own way out of the settlement money she received from their separation. The administrator who oversaw the couple's settlement even went as far as saying that Diana would be receiving bills from the 40 stores that she frequented, as Charles was officially cutting her off. The letter read, With effect from 2 September 1996, any expenditure incurred by or on behalf of Her Royal Highness the Princess of Wales should be invoiced directly to the Princess of Wales' office. And that was that. Taking sides is, sadly, a pretty big part of any divorce, and it seems as though Prince Charles's father, Prince Philip, took Diana's side. According to the book Prince Philip Revealed by Ingrid Stewart, letters that came to light in 2003 showed that Philip was firmly on Diana's team as he wrote a letter to her describing his feelings about the separation between her and Charles. Philip wrote to Diana, Charles was silly to risk everything with Camilla for a man in his position. I cannot imagine anyone in their right minds leaving you for Camilla. Such a prospect never even entered our heads. The letter was signed, quote, with fondest love, Pa. If you watched season 4 of The Crown, you know that crowd size was a sore spot for Prince Charles. And while The Crown is a dramatized account, it doesn't appear to be too far off. Whatever in love means. As noted by the New York Times, Prince Charles attended a solo event in March 1997, about half a year after his divorce, at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. There were some cameras, but as the New York Times put it, Prince Charles's arrival generated nothing like the mass hysteria with which fashion royalty greeted the Princess of Wales. What's more, quote, you could count the paparazzi on the fingers of two hands that showed up for Charles according to the Times. So what was it about Princess Diana that attracted so many people? Stephen Bates, the former royal correspondent for The Guardian, told Time, People invested a lot of emotional intensity in her. Charles was not afforded the same type of adoration. If anything, he experienced a dwindled amount of support in the time following his divorce. Ah, oh, the coveted opinion poll. The life or death of any politician or public figure. And in Prince Charles's case, he's a little bit of both. And after his divorce from Princess Diana was announced, Charles was not welcomed with positive numbers from the British public. According to the New York Times, Gallup conducted a poll shortly after the public learned Charles and Diana were officially getting divorced. The poll surveyed a thousand churchgoers and church officials and asked questions about Charles and the possibility of him getting remarried to Camilla Parker Bowles. The results were less than favorable. More than half of the people surveyed thought that he shouldn't be allowed to become king or the leader of the Church of England should he get remarried. And that's not to mention the fact that Camilla's popularity in Britain was just down the drain. Charles maintained that he had, quote, no intention of remarrying and that the survey was, quote, purely hypothetical. But still, not the best look. Pretty much everyone knew that Prince Charles was in a long-term relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles. He even confirmed that he'd been unfaithful to Princess Diana during a 1994 sit-down television interview, saying that he at first tried to make their relationship work. Until it became irretrievably broken down. But it seemed like as soon as his divorce from Diana was made public, Charles became pretty cavalier with his connection to Camilla. The New York Times reported that on the weekend that the news broke about his divorce, Charles spent the days with Camilla in Wales. As you may have guessed, Charles' newfound freedom was not well celebrated, and photos of the two vacationing together were viewed by many Britons as evidence that, quote, Charles had continued his reported affair with Mrs. Parker Bowles, whom many Britons blame for the demise of the royal marriage. Diana herself admitted in an interview that she felt Charles's ongoing relationship with Camilla was a factor in their divorce. Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. Divorce can be tough on not just the people involved in the marriage, but on the extended family as well. 
That was certainly the case for Prince Charles, as the strain that his divorce took on his relationship with his mother, Queen Elizabeth, most likely was more pronounced than people in similar situations. According to the Los Angeles Times, Elizabeth wrote to Charles and Diana and told them to get divorced. And what did Charles do? He wrote a letter back, agreeing to the Queen's terms. We honestly can't imagine conversing like this with family, because this is truly some wild tension. A royal reporter at the time, Simon McCoy of Sky TV, dished about the tension that was brewing as a result of the divorce. McCoy revealed, One cannot underestimate how angry the Queen has been. At the palace, there's a huge sigh of relief. The Queen has decided that enough is enough. It might come as a shock to some to learn that Prince Charles's life changed in some ways for the better after he divorced Princess Diana, largely due to the fact that his dynamic with his ex-wife significantly improved after they went their separate ways. Tina Brown, the former editor of The New Yorker, met with Diana for lunch after the divorce had settled, and dished about the sit-down to the Telegraph. Brown told the publication that Diana and Charles were, quote, on the best terms they'd been for a very long time, and assigned responsibility to two aspects. One, their divorce had died down in the headlines, and two, their boys were growing up. Brown shared that Charles and Diana, quote, talked about their philanthropies, and Diana had finally come to terms about Charles's relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles. Brown said, Charles got into the habit of dropping in on her at Kensington Palace, and they would have tea and a sort of rueful exchange. They even had some laughs together. As mentioned, Prince Charles and Princess Diana learned to get along, but things still weren't so easy for Charles. During the period of time in which he was separated from Diana, Charles was the subject of a note penned by Diana, who claimed that he was, quote, planning an accident in her car with, quote, brake failure and serious head injury. The note was written in 1995, and needless to say, it did not go over terribly well. Diana's words, that became eerily accurate in the aftermath of her death, became public in 2003, significantly altering Charles's life and casting shadows on his public perception. According to the Daily Mail, Charles was questioned by Britain's police in 2005 and became a witness in a probe about Diana's death. John Stevens, the former head of London's Metropolitan Police, told the outlet that he questioned Charles about the note extensively, but the heir to the throne played it cool. Charles reportedly said that he didn't know anything about the note until it was published by the media. When asked if he had discussed the note with Diana, Charles denied ever knowing about it or Diana's concerns. Talk about a life-altering experience. Prince Charles and Princess Diana were officially divorced in August 1996. A year later, Diana died after suffering injuries in a car accident on August 31, 1997. And while his life was already altered given that he was no longer married to Diana, Charles's life changed drastically after she died. According to Penny Jr., a royal biographer who wrote the 2005 book The Firm, Charles's reaction to Diana's death painted a grave picture of his future. According to Juner's biography, the first question Charles reportedly asked when he heard the news was, they're all going to blame me, aren't they? Juner went on to include that Charles said that, quote, the world's going to go completely mad, isn't it? Before asking his private secretary, Stephen Lamport, if Diana's death would, quote, destroy the monarchy. Lamport said yes, before adding that Diana's death would have a profound impact on Queen Elizabeth, too. Maintaining a good relationship with the in-laws can be pretty tough, but add a divorce and things can get even worse. Factor in a tragic death and you've got the perfect storm. According to Page Six, things went downhill for Prince Charles after his divorce from Princess Diana and her untimely death when it came to his interactions with her family members. It was just days after Diana's death when her ex-husband and her brother got into a massive fight over the phone. In his book, Battle of Brothers, Royal historian Robert Lacey wrote that Diana's brother was in opposition to the idea of Prince William and Prince Harry walking behind their mother's casket at her funeral. And things with the heir to the throne went south quickly. Lacey wrote, Spencer felt quite sure that Diana would have been horrified at the idea of her sons having to endure such an ordeal. He had already told Charles as much. Apparently, in a conversation with Diana's brother, Charles Spencer, Prince Charles made, quote, a particularly offensive comment about his ex-wife, which all but sealed the ill-fated label on his relationship with the Spencers. Perhaps the most profound way that Prince Charles' life changed after he divorced Princess Diana was that he could publicly pursue his relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles. Their affair was the worst-kept secret in Britain, 
but after he became a single man, Charles went ahead with the partnership. Furthermore, he took the steps to introduce his children to Camilla in 1998, less than a year after Diana died. According to The Guardian in July 1998, Charles introduced Prince William to Camilla for the very first time. It was reported that William and Camilla met for about a half hour at St. James Palace, and Charles was with them for the interaction. However, the introduction wasn't at all planned. William just happened to stop by the palace when Camilla was there visiting with Charles, as she was, quote, a regular visitor. Talk about a potentially very awkward greeting. The Guardian reported that William and Camilla met two more times after their first encounter, and Charles was putting plans in place for his longtime mistress to meet his youngest son, Prince Harry. Talk about a lifestyle shift. At the time of their divorce, Charles was working on a, quote, transparent campaign to introduce Camilla Parker Bowles to the British public, according to The Guardian. But after Diana died, his efforts halted, and Camilla wasn't seen publicly with the heir to the throne until 1999. According to Harper's Bazaar, two years passed and Charles was once again willing to push Camilla ever so gently into the public eye. The two were spotted leaving the Ritz in London following Camilla's sister's birthday party. Dynamics were altered for Charles yet again in 2000, when Queen Elizabeth finally agreed to meet Camilla for the first time. The BBC reported, Charles, Camilla, and the Queen are believed to have sat at the same table and so ended a much-publicized standoff since the prince divorced his wife, the late Diana, Princess of Wales. Calling her a, quote, dark figure on the royal scene, the BBC reported that Charles's romantic life was finally starting to change in his favor. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite royals are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.